Aloha YouTube, this is your boy Crypto Roots and I'm back at it again, spitting mo crypto game, the blockchain hustler, the DeFi kingpin, Dreddy Nakamoto, Mr. Crypto Exotic, you know what I'm saying, we mining that garlic shmoney, so this is going to be part two of my first video, how to jump in the developer game the roots way, this is going to be how to jump in the smart contract game the roots way, alright, so we got a lot to go over. You know what I'm saying? So roll up a joint and smoke one with your boy roots. All right. So I forgot to mention in my last video to make DuckDuckGo your default search engine. You'll have to go to your settings on Firefox. After you go to settings on Brave, or just when you search anything, don't use Google to search. Use DuckDuckGo. It's a privacy-based search engine. Always use this. Do not feed the beast your data. All right. So when it comes to programming smart contracts on the Ethereum blockchain, Ethereum virtual machine. The programming language is called Solidity, okay? This is the programming language of Ethereum smart contracts. They do have Viper out, but we're not gonna focus. That's a little bit uh, a little bit more advanced, all right? But this is how, this is the programming language of smart contracts. Now, Solidity is based off JavaScript, C++, and Python, all right? So, and before you even can even learn Solidity, you have to learn JavaScript. You have to learn JavaScript. And once you know JavaScript, it's telling you you're in the game. You can do web development, you can do back end, you can do all types of things. So in order to learn Solidity, you're gonna have to learn JavaScript, okay? And it took me a while to really get this down, but it's worth it. I'm telling you, this is such a valuable skill to be a JavaScript developer, all right? So hit me up if you need uh, you know, more of a uh, programming mentorship about how all this works. But you gotta learn JavaScript, so take the time to learn that. And in order to really get better at Solidity, you, you should really learn TypeScript. I just learned TypeScript. And there was a huge gap in my knowledge between learning JavaScript and learning Solidity. And it wasn't because Solidity statically typed. You have to type, uh, you have to declare the data types, right? But I didn't, so learning uh, TypeScript really helped me like bridge the gap between JavaScript and Solidity. So I really recommend you to learn JavaScript first and then learn TypeScript, which is kind of, I wouldn't say as a, a new form or different form of JavaScript. It's easier uh, to write JavaScript is through TypeScript. And then you, you'll really be able to uh, program Solidity. All right, you'll have all the uh, tools and understandings you need. Now, once you get these languages down, JavaScript, TypeScript, you get that Solidity down, you're definitely gonna need Node.js. This is for the back end. All right, you're definitely gonna need Node.js for just programming and doing anything. This is standard, Node.js, so you'll have to download, download it here. And then once you got Node.js, you'll have to install NPM. I think it comes with NPM. Yeah, it's, it's installed with uh, Node.js. NPM is installed with Node.js. But this is the Node package manager, so where you'll download all types of libraries and you know plugins and all that stuff, right? So this is standard. It all comes with JavaScript. All this is JavaScript, uh, TypeScript, Node.js, npm. See, that's why JavaScript is such a beast. And then you'll be able to program Solidity. Okay, so once you got those down, you're gonna need a framework, a smart contract framework. Now the most popular one is Truffle. What's a framework? It's like the outline of something. It's like a, a, a pre-made kind of car but the, you you get to fill in all the the colors and the, the the dashboard and so it's like the frame of it and you get to kind of fill in the rest uh, that probably wasn't the best example but you get what i'm saying so and you need npm see you need npm to even install this framework right and in order to get npm you need node.js in order to get node.js you definitely gotta you know have some javascript so they all these are all connected together okay so i won't i'm not going into hella detail this is just for new people who are trying to jump in the game trying to give you some resources and just get you prepared for what what's you know for what's to come if you really were to take this uh journey into blockchain development so once you got truffle you're going to need uh, a development blockchain so that's where Ganache comes in. It's part of the Truffle suite. So Ganache is like, um, it's like a private, a personal Ethereum blockchain. So it's meant for testing. You get different accounts with a bunch of fake ether. So you can kind of simulate the blockchain world on your local environment, local computer. And so that's where Ganache, I use Ganache a lot. Um, but yeah, so Truffle and Ganache definitely worked. They, they go hand in hand. And that'll pretty much get you going um, with that. 
Now, outside of that, this is what I'm really rocking with is hard hat. All right, Ethereum development, uh, Ethereum development environment for professionals. So hard hat has its own blockchain. It long, it has its all its tools itself, local blockchain and debugging. So I'm really starting to dig uh, hard hat. I'm really starting to dig it, and um, yeah, I'm still learning more about it. There's just so much information to go over, and I don't want to bore bore you guys to death. But I'm just trying to let you know what tools you're going to need to jump in this game. So there's truffle and ganache. And then there's Hard Hat. Hard Hat has like a truffle and ganache inside of it itself, which is dope. All right. And like I like I said, I went over in my last video. You're gonna need a GitHub, and that's where you're gonna be able to get clone and clone all the the repos and repositories and you know all that stuff. You know. So you're gonna need definitely gonna need GitHub. There's there's no debate about it. You're gonna need to know Git. Obviously, I should put that on here. Git. Look up Git. You're gonna need to know that. Obviously, you're going to need a code editor. Visual Studio Code went over this in my last video. That's why this is part two, because you are definitely going to need a code editor and a GitHub account. Now, outside of that, there's their online remix IDE, Integrated Development Environment. So this is the old school. There's a new one for remix. This is where you'll do all your smart contract code online, where you can, it's like a uh, online where you can deploy your contracts, write all your code. You don't need to download anything. You can just pull up. Go to this website and have your own uh, environment, text editor, and everything. There's a lot, a lot to go over. It has different compilers. The other version of the website did not work. It wasn't working well for me. I don't know why. So here's the old version of the website, Remix. But yeah, this is where you're going to pretty much do all your test dummy contracts. And you know you can connect to your MetaMask as a JavaScript virtual machine and already. So this is just basic, you know, basic testing and deploying and compiling contracts there's different compilers all right you see there's different compilers what is the compiler it breaks down the code to uh to what op code or byte code just it breaks down the code uh for the ethereum virtual machine so you choose the compiler version uh to compile all this and that's what this is at the top of the product we're going to go over in a little bit so now once you got that, once you got Remix, you definitely want to start uh, sign up for a Stack Overflow. This is where you're going to get so many of your program questions answered for Solidity, TypeScript, Node.js. Pretty much this is where I've gotten really all my answers immediately there. It's just uh, duck, duck, going, computer questions, and Stack Overflow comes up first. So got to have Stack Overflow on deck. It's definitely, definitely going to help you out. Any problem you're experiencing, believe me, a lot of people have experienced it too, and this is what will help you out. And then once you got that sign up, you got Ethereum Stack Exchange. So it's like Ethereum, but uh, Stack Overflow for Ethereum. So this is where you get all your Ethereum development questions answered. And you know, believe me, I'm not making. I, I've used all these trying to figure all this stuff out. So this is some. These are all how I learned the game. Everything I'm t telling you, this is what I've used and learned myself, and gotten resources and help. So. Stack Overflow, Ethereum Stack Exchange, which is like Ethereum Stack Overflow. And then when you go to Reddit, you want to sign up for the Ethereum development uh, subreddit. This is where you're going to get a lot of your questions answered, learn about, you know, everything. Find tutorials, projects. So this is where I go when I want to talk to or ask questions to Ethereum developers. No doubt, no doubt. And then obviously uh, Solidity, that Solidity subreddit as well. This is where I get more of my really smart contract programming questions answered. So Ethereum Dev, uh, subreddit, Solidity subreddit. Now there's a lot of uh, a lot of Discord. Pretty much every crypto has its support gamer developer channel, okay? But I, when I really need to talk to developers, I go to Crypto Devs. I'll leave, I'll leave an invitation. But this is where you can get your Solidity, Web3, Viper, Ethereum, Virtual Machines. So there's people all day ready on deck. This guy's very, very helpful, uh, Clement. So this is where I get a lot of my questions answered. Crypto Dev on Discord, um, that really, really helps me out. You know, so I need as many because I'm still learning the game and I'm teaching myself. So I have to really, really dig deep and ask a lot of questions and try to get these answers, uh, uh, questions answered. All right, so here's a smart contract, example smart contract. We're gonna go over it a little bit. Now, this is hella old as far as the compiler because Solidity is on version uh, eight, version eight. So, but this is version three. So, but you go to Pragma Solidity and you tell which compiler version. So it has to, it's very specific. 
which compiler you use to break, uh, pretty much break down this code to small, you know, uh, smaller code. Essentially, that's just a high-level overview. So you always got the name of the contract. It's pretty much just a JavaScript object. Okay, so it all starts with contract example. So that's all contracts start with this contract, and that's how you know it's a contract. Then you got the state variables. You got an address, and that address is the uh, the owner, the owner of this address. All right, so you declare address. That's the owner. Then you got a mapping of the different addresses uh, to the numbers. It's called uh, unsigned integer. So you're gonna have an address assigned to one, address assigned to two, another address assigned to three. So that's how it's gonna, it's like a key value store and all that, that's gonna be called account. So it's gonna be pretty much an array, all right? These are state variables, they're stored on the blockchain and it costs gas. You got a constructors, constructors, whenever the first contract is pretty much like uh, initiated or interact with the first, pretty much yeah, deployed. You know, correct me if I'm wrong if you're a developer, but most of this, it's like when the, you first interact. So it's a public, uh, uh, public constructor which means it can be seen and it's saying whoever's the owner is the message dot sender whoever's sending this message is the owner of this contract so whoever, whatever contract or account is deploying this contract that's who the owner and that's the owner gets control over this contract so these are different functions all right functions are just things you can do right so there's the function you declare it function here's the mint you got it it's statically typed so you have to you have to type out uh you have to type out the um the data type essentially so this is an address you have to type that out so it knows it's an address and then you put the recipient of the address right here this is what, and then you have an unsigned integer you let him know it's going to be a number and you say which kind of number it's public anybody can view it anybody can see it saying if message sender is equal to owner uh go ahead accounts recipient this is the this is the array of which account you'll add the value all right um transfer you'll add the value to what it's at transfer from which address how much public if it counts as message dot sender greater than the value okay uh message dot sender minus the value and accounts add add the value to what's already there uh balance address put the address here public view you're just viewing it you're not uh paying any gas it returns whatever it's returning it's returning a number and what if the number is returning it's turning the uh, uh the balance of this this account this array of the accounts i know it sounds confusing and it's kind of a lot to go over and some of it's kind of confusing especially some of these uh uh operators conditionals right here it's a little confusing but that's the general gist of a smart contract and i'm getting better at reading uh reading it and so for as far as some YouTube resources, smart contract programmer on YouTube helped me out a lot. You know, he's kind of boring to listen to, to be honest. Uh, Eat the blocks, good resource, definitely have, definitely to, uh, to have, helped me out a lot. And uh, DAP University helped me out a lot as well. But I still have to kind of put all these pieces together. All right. I still have to uh, figure out and eventually I'll be coming out with my own smart contract course. See, these are all the tools you're going to need to really even, I wouldn't say get to the level my, I'm on because there's still a higher level for me to get, you know, learning how everything fits together. But I've taught myself computer science and computer programming. I didn't know nothing. But now I'm at the point where I can read smart contracts somewhat, somewhat efficient, proficiently, somewhat, somewhat. So uh, holla at your boy Crypto Roots if you want to learn more about development and programming and smart contracts and all that stuff. I just have so much fun learning about it. It is a bit challenging and difficult, but once you get it down, you get it down and you start to really just can read the code really smoothly. All right, holla at your boy Crypto Roots. Peace.